as a director, you're obviously making a million decisions a day and, and you are the leader of this team. What do you do when you feel unsure? Have you ever stepped onto a project and thought, I'm, I'm not ready for this, and how did you deal with that? Or are you guys always sure on every project? <laughs> oh, I'm unsure every time. I, you get a script, you're never sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you're not sure, I guess you're gonna fake it until you are sure, I guess, <laughs> then respect. Yeah. I always find like yelling at people works really <laughs> uh, to make me feel stronger and better, uh, even if it's over nothing. So I'll chastise people, scream at them, and then I start to feel powerful and I get, no, no. Uh, I, I think David's answer is perfect. I think you should be walking on set with a certain degree of uncertainty. I think that's actually a healthy part of the process. Mm -hmm. That nothing can ever replicate that feeling of being on that set with these incredible actors emotionally stated in this scene and to acknowledge the fact that I don't know exactly what's going to happen in this situation I think is like that's the reason we probably all do this is that discovery is so cool. And when it comes to Improv, I know Succession uses quite a bit of that. Was there a moment that was improvised day of that you're especially proud of her that you especially loved? Yeah, I, I think it goes back to what we've all been talking about, that you know, when you have your ideas for how scenes go, you want the actor to play it a certain way. I always get a little itchy when everything's lining up too nicely. Yeah. I want to make sure there are some mistakes flowing around. So I, I always jokingly say on the best day of my life, I was right like 68% of the time. Uh, so I always throw improv in there to make sure that there's some collisions and accidents. And it was funny with this cast because uh, we usually when I cast people, I make sure I tell them, you know, you're okay with improv. I've worked with Ben before as an actor. We all know how that goes. <laughs> and uh, but in this case, we we you know we had some classically trained actors who just looked me straight in the eyes and told me there's no way I'm improvising. <laughs> And uh, sure enough, on the day we would get there and I would yell out, hey, try this. And they would go, no. <laughs> and the whole crew would get still for a second and I would just say, we're rolling, you might as well. And then they would start to do it and of course they would fall in love with it. I mean, every actor does. So yeah, there's a family dinner scene that's the birthday for Logan Roy. And that's entirely improvised. I gave everyone their own conversation they were going to have, and I just did the dolly track around the table, and we just circled the table for a full mag and did it like, you know, three times in a row. And uh, they were incredible. Dave, I know you've brought Storm Reed on a, a few projects now. Mm -hmm. um, what is it about certain actors that creates that? You just get to a place where it's a nod of the head or you just can say, oh, and they know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. That kind of thing becomes really comfortable and allows you to think about a lot of other things as opposed to having to kind of mold so carefully, so. Yeah. Well, it's like syncing <laughs> up your rhythms, you right. know, mm -hmm. like between how you saw the story and how they saw it. I mean, we had it with Jeremy Strong where there was a scene where he's supposed to lose everything. When he's in a bathroom, his dad has betrayed him and because I had done another movie with him, I was able to tell him, like, Jeremy, we're going to do one take on this. I'm going to put two people in the bathtub, two cameramen, and just go. And he just, without blinking, was like... And, and I think part of it was we knew Jeremy was that kind of actor. There are other actors that'd be like, you're basically saying there's no net. Go for it. <laughs> but because we knew Jeremy loved that, he rose to that challenge. And it's my favorite scene in the entire episode is, like, he him just thrashing this bathroom apart because his dad's betrayed him. And then yet after a beat, he still cleans up the bathroom. He's still got the leash around his neck, you know. It's that trust. I mean, I, I Christian Bale's the funniest because first time I worked with him, he didn't know that I did bits, that I joked around. So it took me like weeks to get to the point where I was like, I'm gonna joke around with Christian Bale. And there was finally this big take at the end of the big short where his character walks off set and writes on the board plus 380%. And basically he's been proven right. Everyone said you're wrong. And of course he did an amazing take. We did two takes, we did three takes. And I came up to him and I just said, you know, Christian, we got it, but wouldn't it be great on one take if you just turned the camera and kissed your fingers and said, peace out. <laughs> and there was this long pause. <laughs> and Christian just looks at me and goes, 
don't know if my guy would do that. <laughs> and I went, I'm, I'm fuck, you know, I'm screwing around with you, Christian. You could see these lights just went on, and from then on, it was like bits nonstop. <laughs> but that, that's what you get out of like, you know, if you're talking about it with working with actors over and over again, it becomes unsaid. The rhythm mm -hmm. matches up quicker, mm -hmm. and it's the best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hi, I'm Ben Stiller. I'm Ava DuVernay. I'm Patty Jenkins. I'm Adam McKay. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching the Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter Roundtables. Roundtable on YouTube. On YouTube. On YouTube.